Greencast just to introduce you to the uh, database that we're using as part of the Waterloo Uncovered project. You may have seen, if you've looked at some of the evaluation reports or some of the reports online, that there's links out to the raw data. Um, <clears throat> and this, raw da this is the raw data that we use to kind of make the interpretations and uh, come to our initial conclusions. And one of the aims of the project is to make sure that all of that data is completely open and accessible for people to have a look at so they can you know, see our thought processes, maybe challenge some of our interpretations, that type of thing. Um, so what we have here, this is the, uh, the home page of the database. Now the database runs on a software program developed by LP Archaeology called the Archaeological Recording Kit, or ARC. Um, and it's relatively simple to use. So the first thing we do, if you're on the, on the first page here, um, if you just click one of these links, for instance, let's view the finds records. We click through onto that, and that'll immediately take you to a... Um, a page which shows all of the finds that we've that we've recovered so far um, on the Waterloo Uncovered project. Bear in mind that this project is ongoing, so these finds will be uh, updated and changed. And um, at the moment, I'm just showing the initial results, but as the finds are cleaned up and re-photographed and um, <coughs> analysed properly, then I suspect that the data will change a little bit in here as we start learning new things about them as we as we explore them all a little bit more. But up on this screen, <coughs> um, we can click on one of these finds. Let's click on uh, this find here, for instance. So this is a button, um, which was found, as you can see from the map here, um, just in the killing zone, just to the south of the uh, formal garden of Hougamont. So it's this red dot here. Um, it's actually quite an interesting button, uh, because as you can see here, if we click on one of these photos, um, it has got a lion on it. Now this lion is a Nassau lion, and the Nassau regiments we know were um, situated in Hougamont during the battle. Um, <clears throat> but once we looked at this button a little bit closer, it seems that actually it's probably modern um, because it's it's so well preserved and and the uh, and the depth that it was found at and everything suggests it's actually probably a reenactor button. Um, so that's a, that's that's a shame, but it's also still quite interesting and it also demonstrates you know how the finds get contaminated with with uh, reenactor finds as well. Um, and in fact, this is is also an interesting record because you can see here that there's a public comment section um, where someone has added a comment. So in this case, it was Mike uh, Johnson who's on the project, but he was um, showing a, a tweet that someone had tweeted in during the excavation, uh, pointing out to us that this was actually a Nassau button. Um, and so each one of these finds has a, has a public comment section on it that uh, anyone can add to. Um, and hopefully, if you, if you um, have anything to say about any of these finds, um, please add a comment on there because you know, all of the sort of interpretation and everything that we can get uh, really helps with the, with the overall project. So feel free to, to add comments to any of the, uh, to any of the records in art because everything, everything will go towards uh, helping us get a better picture of what was going on. Okay, so if we now go back to the, uh, to the homepage there, you'll see there's some other things we can do. Uh, so let's have a look at the context records. Now, context records are the uh, they're records that we use as archaeologists to record essentially the soil that we find. Um, so everything that we find in the ground, for instance, a, a pit or a ditch uh, or, or structures, uh, previously constructed structures and things like that, parts of those structures, they all get a number, a context number. And those context numbers are then uh, recorded and, that, and information about those different layers and deposits gets added into the database. Uh, you can see here that I clicked on this little view, which is the table view. Uh, then you've also got a thumbnail view, you've got a map view here, and then also a text view, which is a sort of Google view, if you like. Um, so we can, that gives us a table of all of these different contexts. And if we click on one of these, um, whatever, 400 here, You'll see that uh, layer 400 is turf and topsoil interpreted by Tony Pollard on 30th of April. Um, and then there's some extra information about that. 
uh, as we go through the sort of excavation and post-excavation process, we'll add more data to these, to these context records. So we'll have photos um, and, and uh, we'll give them you know, provisional periods and that type of thing as the interpretation goes on. So this is a, an ever-evolving database. Um, so you have to keep coming back and checking out what's going on. Um, something else we can do here, if we go back to our home page, is we can start using the search functions. So at the moment, we've got a search function which is already set up. Just as an example, in this case, this is uh, viewing the, all of the musket balls that we've found. Um, so you can see here, here's a sort of spatial distribution of the musket balls um, that are being found. These are over, overlaid on Cyborn's, uh, Cyborn's map of, of Hugamol. Uh, so you can see um, all of these, at the moment, all of the uh, musket balls we found are down this, down this particular road, or a lot of them are uh, at least. Um, and then there's a lot here on the edge of the woods, um, which as we know was, was where a lot of the fighting happened at the start of the, at the, start of the battle. Um, so already just by looking at these on a map, you can start to see patterns emerging. And if you're interested in any of these, you can just click on them and that will take you straight to the, if you click on that there, it will take you straight to that, to that record. Um, other things we can do on this search page here, if we do that minus button, it gets rid of all of the filters. Um, we can search, for instance, by an object type. So if I click here, it gives us all of the different object types we've found. Uh, so let's say we want to look at the buttons again then that will bring up a map of all of the buttons um, in the same way that we saw with the musket balls. Uh, and then we can you know, view that as a, as a table. So some of those have got periods on them there. Um, or we can view them as thumbnails. And that will show us all of the buttons that we've found. And then if you're interested in any of them again, you can just click through straight to those. Uh, so there's, there's quite a lot of things you can do here with the search tools and for this first um, screencast I'm not going to go too much into the advanced options but you know have a play around and see what you can do with it. Um, it's quite a powerful search mechanism for finding what you want. Um, and then finally there's another, there's another um, tab here called the map view. So this will show you a, an overall map of, of the site with all of the finds. Um, and if we zoom out here, you can see this is overlaid on, at the moment, on uh, Cran's map, De Cran's map of 1816. Um, but we can turn that, uh, we can turn that off or on again. Um, and then also you can do this thing called thematize here. So these are all of the finds, and let's say you wanted to show um, all of the different object types. If you click that, then you'll see each of the finds here gets coloured up with what with what it is basically. So musket balls are green here, and then if you hover over each of these, um, hover over each of these categories, you'll see that the map starts highlighting them like that. So, um, and then again, if you're interested in what one of them is, you can click it, and that'll take it to button. And then if you click after that, that'll take you straight uh, to that find. And finally, these ones here, if there's a button or materials, if you click any of these hyperlinks on these, that will take you back to the search page. And this is now showing us all of the objects which um, are made of iron. So I think that's probably about uh, all for now. Um, I suspect we'll do some more screencasts in the future with some of the other, with the other um, facilities that, uh, that you can do with ARC, things that you can do with ARC. Um, but yeah, have a play around and if you've got any questions, don't hesitate to get in contact with the Waterloo Uncovered team and, and, um, and we'll be happy to, to help. Thanks very much.